Did you know that you can create a table in Excel, format it exactly the way you want, then copy it as an HTML file and reuse the HTML code within Power BI to create the exact same looking table and make it fully dynamic? Well, today I'm going to show you how this is done. I'm going to try to rebuild the table that you see on my screen right now. As you can see, this table could never have been built using the default or the native Power BI table on Matrix Visual. So let's see what we have. We have a nicely formatted table showing lessons from Monday to Friday and also the lessons per day. And depending on the class which is selected in the slicer, the lessons individually change. And on top of that, we also highlighted the current day um, with a different border. So let's start to rebuild this from zero. So I have a brand new Power BI file, but what I mentioned before is that we don't actually start in Power BI, we start in Excel. So when I hop over to Excel and I already selected new file, you see that I have a bunch of pre-built templates that I can use. And there's loads of them for every occasion. The one that I've used is called weekly, weekly planner. So if you just search for weekly planner, you find the one called weekly lesson planner. When I select it and click create, I get a brand new Excel file, which looks like this. Let's just make this a bit smaller and Let's clean this up a little bit, because once you know how this is done, you can then rebuild whatever table you want to have in Power BI. But so we don't spend too much time on this video, I'm just going to remove some of the rows and columns I don't actually want, so I can get rid of this. I also get rid of the date and also I get rid of the notes. Well, I also didn't need the title. So this is basically the table I want to have in Power BI and make it dynamic and link it to my to my data. Um, so before I save this as an HTML file, I want to make sure that every cell which I want to dynamically address or change um, has a specific value. So let's just get rid of this reading, English, spelling, math and science and just add the numbers one to five and then um, Let's just add this formula. So now we have, now every cell has an individual value. Then I select the range that I want to save. Go to file save as, go to the location where I want to save it. And instead of saving it as an Excel file, that's important. I want to save this as an HTML file. And then please make sure to save only the selected cells and save. Publish. And now when I go to this folder, I now have an HTML file. When I open it, it opens up in the browser. And from here, I can actually get the code. So right click, view page source, then control A to copy, to select everything, control C to copy. Then I want to go to a notepad or any editor um, program, paste in the code. And now I need to replace all double quotes with single quotes. So again, control A to select all, control H to um, search and replace. We want to replace double quote with single quote. Replace all. And now I copy the whole code again, go to my new Power BI file, and now I can create a measure. So new measure, which is called table. Start with double quote, paste the code I just copied, confirm with enter, and now we can see if this actually worked. So let's add this to, I haven't actually added the visual to the report yet, so let me import the HTML and CSS viewer visual from AppSource. So let me search for KTeam, and then the HTML and CSS viewer is the visual that we want to use. Now that the visual is imported, let's add it to the report, make it a bit bigger, 
and add the table measure to the HTML field and we can see that now already I have exactly the same table that I just created in Excel. Um, well, it's a little bit too big, but that's not a problem. We can use the scaling um, option here to just reduce the size a bit. So now we have a nicely formatted table. What's missing is, of course, the dynamic part. So right now everything is hard coded one, two, three, four, five. But actually what we want is we want to get the data from our table. So let's see what we have. We have a table with four columns with the class with class ABC. We have the topic, the day of the week, and we have the lesson per day. So class topic day lesson. This information is important for us to make our measure dynamic. So what we need to do is we need to create variables for each of the cells that we want to dynamically change. So the first one would be the first lesson of Monday. So let's create a variable called Monday, Monday one. And that would be, we just calculate, we'll read the lesson. No, I think it's called topic. And we need to filter, we want to filter the day, should be Monday, and also the lesson should be the first lesson of the day. Um, I think there's a bracket missing, very good. So this should now return the first lesson of Monday. But of course now we need to make sure to incorporate this into the correct place in the code. And that's exactly why we added an individual value for each cell. So we know that we need to put this variable where we currently have the hard-coded one. So let's go and look into the code again. For now, we can ignore the top part. This is only styling. We actually need to see the actual table. And the actual table starts here where we have the table statement. And then somewhere in this code, we'll have one row which contains the number one. And that's exactly what we need to replace. So let's go and close the HTML with a double quote and add some DAX to it. And with a double quote, we'll go back to HTML. So this only replaced the first lesson of Monday so far, but let's see if it works. Well, this cell is empty now, but that might be possible. So what we should do is we should add the slicer that we also saw in the demo. We want to um, filter by class. Let's also change this into a horizontal and make it single select. And we can probably get rid of the header. So class A, English, Monday morning, class B, well, can sleep in on Monday, class C, same thing. So that seems to work. So let's do exactly the same, for, but for all the other lessons. So we have Monday lesson two, three, four, five. They each get a variable. And two, three, four, and five. And now it becomes a little bit easier because we need to do the same thing for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Unfortunately, there's still no search and replace in here. So what I would recommend is using tabular editor because there we can search and replace. It will be much faster doing this. So let's select the table and in here, because this is just a copy of Monday, we say, you know what? we actually want to replace Monday with Tuesday. And in here, we want to replace Monday with Wednesday. And this one should be Thursday. And Friday. replace and save this back to our report so we shouldn't get an error anymore in in our measure very good so what we need to do is now replace the remaining fields 
So let's go down here. So we have two, and two should be the second lesson of Monday. So we can just copy this code here, put this in there, copy, and we do the same here. And once we're done with Monday, which is the case in a second, this should be three, careful, four, and this should be five. I will also do the same for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, but we'll probably speed up this video a little bit. Now that I've added this, the variables to all of the rows and all of the cells, we can check if this actually works. So let's see class A, B, C, and that looks very good. So whenever I select a different class, the whole um, timetable changes. The only thing missing is now to the highlight of the current day. So today is Wednesday. Uh, so we want to have a black border around Wednesday to, to easily see yeah, you know what day it is today. So let's go back into the code and first of all we need to have a measure or a variable that returns today's um, date. So we have today and we actually want to have the weekday of today and we want to add two because two means uh, Monday being the first day of the week. So now we need to go back and see what we actually need to modify. What I mentioned before that the top part here is formatting. And now we want to actually change something in the formatting. But first we need to go and see, uh, let's just start with Wednesday because we know today is Wednesday. That Wednesday, this is, this is Wednesday. This whole thing here is Wednesday. We can also see that this is the very first column where we say have WED Wednesday. Um, and then in here we see a class and that's exactly the CSS class that we need to find um, further up in the code and the one we need to modify. So it's the one starting with 177. So let's see the 177, that's the one we want. And in here you see that we have defined a border style and that's exactly the border style that we want to make dynamic. So. Let's just add some space in here um, before the border definition starts. Let's finish this with a double quote and let's add some text to it. So what we want is we want an if statement and we want to see if the variable which is returned um, for today equals to three because Wednesday is the third day of the week. Then we want to have a specific border. So let's copy the code that we have here where the border is defined and just change it. So instead of only adding a top border for two, well, 0.5, very thin border, let's add one for 2.5 or two points solid and let's make it black. And let's also add a border on the right, on the bottom, and on the left. And if this is not the case, so it's not today, then we actually just want to return the border that was in here before. Right? Then we don't want to change anything. And we need to be careful to... Um, at the correct double quotes everywhere. So that looks correct to me. Let's see what happens. So you see already in the background that now Wednesday has a border. Um, so you all, all we need to do is copy and paste this and reuse it and do the same thing for the other days. So let's see what code or what class Monday has. Monday has class 178. Before we go up there, let's copy all of this. And we need to be careful to also, oh, not careful, but we need to, uh, it's easier if you remember that this was actually added after vertical align and before background. So let's copy this 
and now I forgot what I said Monday was um, 178 so 178 and we want to add this after text align so let's see if I just copy this in um, let's copy it in the same position here this should still work but Monday is of course one and now I copied a bit too much so basically we need to get rid of this part here and yeah very good so it should also work for Monday so let's just assume today is Monday so we have Wednesday minus two is Monday and we can see that now Monday has the black border so we'll just do the rest for the other days um, I will speed this up again a little bit. So this should now work. Let's see. Wednesday. Let's assume it's Friday. So we add two days. We have Friday plus one day. Thursday. Very good. So this is exactly um, what we need. We have a slicer dynamically adding or changing the lessons of each of the classes. And then we have a dynamically formatted day, which is highlighted, highlighting today's day. And with this sort of technique, you can really create any kind of table that you do in Excel and, and you know copy, copy the code and reuse it in, in Power BI. It, it, it may take some time to get used to, to doing this, but um, I think I did this now in something over or under 20, 25 minutes. Um, so I'm sure you can do the same. And if not, um, just leave a comment and um, I'd be happy to, to help you out.